I was recently listening to a debate uh, between uh, Lawrence Krauss and uh, William Lane Craig, and I had a couple of comments that I wanted to make about the debate. Um, and, and by the way, uh, I am going to be in a debate soon, um, probably within the next month, uh, at some point, maybe three weeks or so from now. Um, but there's no, no definite date set when it will be up on, on YouTube. It's a debate we're having over Skype. Me and uh, Theophage, uh, who, by the way, uh, in my opinion, uh, is the best YouTube atheist, uh, at least so far as I'm aware. I haven't run across anybody better um, that is currently active. And our debate, uh, as I continue to give this shameless plug, um, it is a little bit different. It's not. We're not debating whether God exists. Uh, we're not. We're not debating that whether God exists. We are. What we're debating instead is whether God might exist. Um, and uh, just to give you a little background, um, the modal ontological argument, which has been propounded by uh, Alvin Plantinga and others, uh, tells us. Well, well, the conclusion is that, that God uh, exists, uh, but the crucial premise in there, which is open to uh, debate, I suppose, uh, is the premise that, uh, in the modal ontological argument, that possibly God, God exists. It's possible that a necessary being exists, and God would be the necessary being. Uh, so this is a valid argument, and uh, my opponent, Theophage, uh, admits as much. Uh, so at the very least he and I agree to to that uh, whether you uh, would, would agree to that or, or not. The, the, see what the, the point is is that if God possibly exists then he does exist but if but if God doesn't even possibly exist then he's impossible. So God definitely exists or he, he's impossible. He's an impossible being. Uh, so I'll be arguing that God is a possible being, that he might exist. Theophage uh, will be arguing that it's not even possible. Uh, but enough for the shameless plug. Uh, and, uh, back to the debate between William Lane Craig and Lawrence Krauss. Uh, that debate itself was a bit uh, unusual. Uh, they weren't debating whether God exists. Rather, they were debating whether there is evidence for the existence of God. And... Uh, the debate itself uh, was rather interesting. Um, the opening statement of uh, Bill Craig was uh, similar to uh, his other opening uh, statements in, in other debates. Um, but there were a couple of things uh, that aren't so much uh, about the debate, but that arose during the debate, which I've noticed have arisen in, in other debates as well. Um, th there are a couple of cards, if you will, that uh, atheists will normally play, uh, well, will often play uh, in, in a debate. Uh, one of them is that belief in God is anti-science or, as Krauss uh, alleged, a science stopper. Uh, now that is uh, a claim uh, which I will... Uh, in a roundabout way, be addressing uh, when I do some videos on the uh, scientific hypothesis of, of God, the, the status of the God hypothesis as a scientific statement. Uh, so I'm not really going to talk about that here. Uh, I would disagree with that. Uh, that's all I'll say is, is that I, I disagree. Uh, that's all I'll say here uh, is that I disagree that it's a science uh, stopper. Just the opposite, I, I, I would say. But the other common uh, tack that, that some skeptics will use, uh, and, and this normally arises in connection with a cosmological argument, whenever a, a theist raises a, a version of the cosmological argument, uh, the skeptic will say, well, that's just a God of the gaps argument. That's committing the God of the gaps fallacy. And I find this uh, rather peculiar because um, 
it, it seems to me uh, that it's very clearly not a, a God of the Gaps argument, the uh, main versions of the cosmological argument. And the the uh, card has, has been played so often, if you will, and, and uh, responded to so often, um, it, it seems like people on the other side of the debate really aren't paying attention uh, to what the theists are saying. Um, because each time the, the skeptic raises that claim that it's a God of the Gaps argument, the cosmological argument, um, the theist will, will explain why it's not a God of the Gaps argument. Uh, but yet they keep bringing it up. The, the skeptic keeps bringing up the claim that it is the God of the Gaps argument. Uh, so my impression, and my impression could be wrong, uh, but my impression is that the the uh, skeptic uh, is confronted with a very uh, cogent argument, a very persuasive argument, uh, which they really want to not be true, and they can't think of anything good to say against it, the cosmological argument, uh, so they just uh, kind of reach into the can of, of, of canned answers and say, oh, well, it must, it, it must be God of the gaps, almost like a, a mantra, God of the gaps, God of the gaps. Well, um, the fact that, it, that it's said often enough uh, does not make it true. Um, in a cosmological argument, we start with the cosmos, we see the cosmos around us, we argue from that to the existence of God. If the cosmos depends on a supernatural agent, then that supernatural agent obviously must exist. Uh, if the universe, um, the, 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 uh, the, the, there's another common charge that the universe could exist on its own, um, uh, but, that, but, but that's, that's a separate issue. Uh, the, the issue is if the cosmos depends upon a supernatural divine being, if that's the only thing that you can put in the God-shaped gap, then that's not logically fallacious. What is fallacious is when you say, we don't know what the cause of, say, lightning is, God's throwing spears. Uh, we don't know what the cause of thunder is, God's, God's bowling. We don't know what the cause of rain is, God's crying. We're, we're, we're positing God because of what we don't know, not because of what we do know, because of what we don't know. We say that it's God, and we hope that the science does, doesn't catch up to us. Uh, but the cosmological argument is saying, this is what we already know from science. We know that the universe is contingent, that it had a beginning, uh, that it is in motion. Uh, these things uh, point beyond the universe to a transcendent divine being. Therefore, a transcendent divine being exists. There's no gap in the logic. There's no logical fallacy. Uh, if there is a hole that will only fit God then we are justified in fitting God in that hole. So it's not we don't know what, what is the case scientifically, it's that we do know what is the case scientifically. And because of what we know, the only possible way to explain that is by appeal to God as the creator or sustainer or the ground of being or the, the uncaused first cause or, or however you want to put it. Um, so yeah, I, I just uh, there was a lot more things in the debate uh, that I could comment on. Uh, but uh, those were just two really quickly that I wanted to mention. And uh, so I hope that it's clear from now on, okay, stop using that objection. Uh, if somebody says, we don't know what the science is here, so, so uh, I'll assert that it's God. That, that is a legitimate God of the gaps fallacy. But the cosmological argument is totally different from that. So stop referring to the cosmological argument, please, I'm begging you, as a God of the Gaps argument. It's not a God of the Gaps argument. If uh, the, the, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's not. Uh, so if my impression of why people play that card uh, is wrong, uh, and you are a skeptic yourself, perhaps, 
uh, feel free to to uh, correct me uh, in a response. Thank you, and uh, thanks for watching. Shalom now.